So for today's video, I want to try something new. I'm going to share an uncut, unfiltered craft along with me. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I wanted to share a real process of journaling and I'm going to work in this cute little art journal, which I so, so adore. I will link a video where you can see how I made this. And this fabric piece here was gifted by my friend Petra, which I added in the Art Journal Festival. And I will link that video for you as well, where you can also see me working in this a little bit. So let's untie her. Don't you just love this? I'm so in love with this cover. I never thought the colors would match to my pink and white that I had there originally, but I love it because it doesn't match. Isn't that weird? And it's such a cute little squishable size. I just love it. So I was working in this last night and I've done a few pages also since you've seen this last. It's such a cute format. On one of the days, I just added one small thing, which was this tag. This paper here was recently gifted to me. How gorgeous is this? It's coffee dyed. It's actually cardstock. And I made a very simple tag out of it using one of my printables that I printed on deli paper. I just added the sticker sweetheart and a twine on top. This took like, I think less than five minutes. And then I wrote on the back, I only made this little tag and it makes me so happy. <laughs> And it really did. It was the only thing I did that day besides like making a video and, and editing and everything. But that was the only thing I did in this journal and the only thing I did like off camera. But this five minute thing made my day. If you love journaling, then you will get that. And last night I made this little page here, which is my mom. And it was her birthday yesterday and I did not feel right going to bed without honoring her birthday in a journal. So I thought this was the perfect journal. Also a super simple page, some stenciling in the background. This is cut out from a photo I had printed. Added some flowers from a vintage floral book that I found at Goodwill and added the happy birthday also took me just a few minutes and it made me feel really good. It made me feel connected more to my mom and it felt like the perfect end of my day. So this is my mom as well. So my mom has passed quite a while ago. So I love keeping in touch with her through art. It's a very, very special feeling that I just discovered actually a few months ago. Maybe something you would enjoy doing with photos of loved ones and you will see all sorts of magical things happening within you. It's absolutely fascinating. And so far, I only have one photo in here of my dad, which is this one here. I added some wings and he's on a fabric belly band. Well, there is one more photo, but you can hardly see him. It's a photo of my parents together. That's, so that's also my mom. I also added some random people in my journal. But of course, the special ones are the ones that you have a connection with. Again, my mom, random from my Keeper of Memories kit. Random from my magazine. Random, random from my Keeper of Memories kit. Same thing with this one. And this one, yeah, this is the one of my parents. Obviously this was when they got married. I, I just love this photo so, so much, but you can hardly see my dad. <laughs> so I want to add another photo of my dad. I think I'll take this one here and I'll just cut him out. So in this video, my plan is not to edit all the boring parts out. <laughs> And I'll see if you stick with me or not, whether you get totally bored. <laughs> I have to admit, I usually don't have the patience to watch other videos where all of these steps are included. 
But hey, maybe you just want to really craft along with me and do your own thing while you're listening to me. I recently got a comment on one of my videos from a viewer who had printed some of my digitals because I had a sale at that point. And she lives by Joshua Tree in California. Mom Kay, sending all my love to you. And she said, you know, like, how cool is technology? All the way from Vienna to Joshua Tree, California. I can buy your digitals, print them out and use them in my journal. I'm obviously aware that uh, that is possible. <laughs> but, uh, you know, once in a while to be reminded that these days technology is so amazing that we can just do that and beam our creativity across the world. It's such a miracle. So dad, where do we put you? I love these little pages, but you know that if you know my channel. <laughs> I'm not so happy with this because I think of all the crinkling, I might have to add something on top. So this was from a very nice Lind chocolate that I received at the Art Journal Festival. What do I do with you, Daddy? I want him to go on a page where there's no other photo on either of the pages. Oh, I kind of like him there. So this is just a backdrop paper and it's a pocket. I do kind of like him there. Let's clamp that down. And I think Daddy needs some wings. So I have some here printed out from Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodah. She has a three page butterfly printable. Two of those pages are very colorful and one has like these earthy sepia tones. And I just printed it on a overhead transparency. So if you print on overhead transparency, please check that it's one that you can print on. Otherwise your colors will just smear. I think this proportion is good. Hmm? Yeah, I think these are going to be too big. I will link Tina's printable for you below. I know it's such a cliche to add wings to people. It has been done over and over and over. And for a while I was really over it. I'm like, oh, can we do something else? But now I'm doing it. <laughs> I've been doing it for weeks and I'm still obsessed. I don't know why. There's something um, so magical about giving people wings. Especially, I have the feeling, if they have passed. It makes it, yeah, magical is, is the word I would use. Okay, daddy and his wings. I love that. So I'm going to... Glue those on before I change my mind, before I start overthinking things, as some of us do, like I do. <laughs> That's another reason why I wanted to try like this uncut version, because that way I don't have the time to overthink things because you will get so bored. <laughs> Okay, so that's a good start. Do we do anything else? I feel like I want to stamp like numbers or something up here. So let me grab some stamps. I just had another idea. Rather than stamping, I might have something in here that works. So this is my ephemera holder. I also have a video on how I made this, which I will link for you below. And I have some collage fodder in here, but I also have some bits of a paper bag. Or these also might not be bad. These are just stencils on deli paper. Let's keep these in mind. And I have these sorted in colors, which seems to work out well. And look, I have this. This is from 
a paper bag. I think this was one from Egypt. I'm not 100% sure, but look at these great numbers. Maybe that would work. Might be too big. This is really working out well for me. I really enjoy this modern version a lot more than my previous vintage version. So what would this look like? Of course, we don't have to use the whole number. That would definitely give it a nice pop of color if we like really cut this down or even cut out the numbers. Mm -hmm. Or I also really like this art. That might work better. Mm. Maybe not. What about this 18.9? No. Nope. I think I need to cut these out. I kind of do like the, these numbers here, but I don't really like the white. So I need to cut these out completely. But it's so nice to have some things on hand. I usually don't do that a lot where I have like a whole bunch of stuff ready to go, like clusters and everything. But I always admire those of you who have that. And it's really a great thing to do when you're maybe not in the mood to craft a whole page but you want to do something creative because it just makes you feel good and then you just make stuff that you can then later use in your journal collage or whatever okay so there's a wonky seven Let me know in the comments below whether you make like collage fodder and clusters and, and, and little embellishments ahead and then just pick and choose once you're ready to work in a journal or do you make everything from scratch as you're working. I'm imagining that it'll be a mixture of both of these things. Meaning some of you will do it this way, some of you will do it another way. I have never cut out these kind of numbers. It's quite fiddly. It would also be really fun to hear in the comments what you are currently working on. Are you making a journal? Are you working in a journal? Oh, and I would actually really, really love to know, do you enjoy making journals rather than working in them? Or do you enjoy working in journals? Like you make your journals or you buy a journal and you work in them or do you do both i would love to know to get an idea what you guys are into that kind of looks cool i'm really liking that yeah let's not overthink it let's just glue it down usually i would glue this down with matte gel but i have this right here so it's just handy i hope it won't wrinkle too much So these are the bits I would usually cut out of the video. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of video. If you want to see me do more of these, like uncut videos. I understand they are a lot more relaxed. So if you want to craft with me, I think this is probably the better option. I'm not actually teaching you anything new. But I do hope to inspire you because I know when I watch other YouTubers craft in their journal, if it's a style I can relate with, it totally motivates me to open up my journal and craft as well. I'm really loving that. The 78, by the way, has no significance to my dad. It's just a pretty number. Sometimes you just use numbers because they're visually pleasing. Do you get that? I'm sure you do. I am super happy with that. I'm just checking, is there another one we can use? I just want my dad because I have my mom in here so often. I don't have a huge amount of photos of my dad from the early days. So, so, so these are all photos before my parents got married. 
and I kind of want to stick to these kind of vintage photos but they're so cute together maybe I should do another one of them together yeah I'm going to cut this one out not the whole thing Since I have been watching YouTube videos on crafting, which is of course before I started my own YouTube channel, I always saw crafters using a small guillotine, whether it's this one or a different kind, doesn't matter. But I always thought, oh my goodness, how convenient to have such a small one on your desk where you can just cut. And eventually I bought one of these where you slide the blade from Fiskars and I never really liked it as much and it was a lot bigger. In my earlier videos you can see me using that and not too long ago I finally bought this one, this little guillotine. It's by Tonic Studios. I don't know how long do I have it now, maybe a year? I don't know. And I was thinking to myself, how did I ever wait so long to get it? I love this tool so much. It's always on my desk and it comes in so handy just because of the small size. And the guillotine stays sharp with the one from Fiskars with the blade. I always had to change the blade very frequently, actually. And this was definitely more expensive, but... In the end, with having to buy all those, can't see where my mom's face is ending. <laughs> she might look very strange now. But in the end, when you have to keep buying new blades, you know, in the long run, those things become more expensive than if you buy one thing, which is maybe more expensive at the beginning, but then you have it like forever and you never need to do anything. And that's also how I go about my craft supplies. I have stopped a long time ago to buy like cheap brands. I don't want to name any any shops now, but from shops that copy other things, you probably know what I'm talking about. Because of course, I also want to support the original company. And usually those products are not as good as the well-known branded ones. So I think in the long run, it also doesn't make sense to buy all these cheap products because you're not going to be happy with them and you're going to keep buying products because you're not happy with them and you're going to keep trying new products instead of for once investing in a high quality product, maybe saving a little more and maybe not having as many products, but the ones that you have are high quality. That's what I would do if I would start out from scratch now. If I just got into junk journaling or art journaling, that's definitely what I would do and what I would advise for any beginner. Don't just buy anything you see out there, not caring about is it a cheap copy or not. Wait and buy the original thing. You'll have it forever and you'll cherish it, appreciate it and have joy every time you use it instead of being frustrated. This is so interesting. This is what happens when I'm unfiltered. <laughs> okay, where do we stick you? This might be a nice spot. Or do we go more for a colorful background? Also cute. What about something darker? Nope, that's not working. Oh, I like it there. It has a mixture of colors and the neutral background. That's perfect. But I do want to add a little bit more color in the back here. I have this fun tissue paper. That might be fun in the back. Let's tear a piece of that. And what I also found that I enjoy is, for example, now for this little art journal, I have certain things that I use in this art journal specifically, and I keep them all together, like <laughs> this pile here that looks very unorganized. I keep it with the art journal so that I don't have to start from scratch every time I take this art journal. I already have some materials here that I have used on some of the pages. And to make the journal cohesive, I want to keep using those materials 
as well as new ones that I think would work in here. But it's really easy then to just take the whole bundle and put it on my desk and see what I can come up with. So I'm really loving those dots. And actually, I'm just going to add them with glue stick, which is also something I don't usually do. I don't really enjoy using glue stick because it's messy. I get glue on my fingers and it's sticky and it's shiny wherever you see it on your project. So I usually definitely prefer my matte medium, but this obviously is quicker and you don't need a brush. Okay, in the end, only one and a half dots are showing. <laughs> oh, we could move it like this. Then we have almost three dots showing. <laughs> This time they are not getting wings, but maybe I can find something else to add to the background without covering everything here because I do want to keep the vintage paper in the back here as well. But I also think that it just needs something else back here. So let's look through these papers. I also really love this pink shiny paper. I have not used that one yet. I love this gold foil thing here. Nope, that's not the one. This one I've already used twice. I don't think I want it a third time. Some lace maybe, let's try that. Just cut this down. This is also from my Keeper of Memories printable. That is definitely one of my favorite printables I've ever made and I think it's very timeless. I think this might be too big or... No, actually I really like it. It's very subtle but I like it. Let's just add it again before I overthink it. How was this so that we can see the three dots? Ah, it was like this. <laughs> yep, I think that's it. I'll glue them down and then maybe I can find a sentiment. I think a sentiment, especially when you are working with images of people, a sentiment always kind of adds like the finishing touch. I had these laying on my desk. These I think are from Tim Holtz Chadra box. I was gifted these so I never had the packaging and I really like this one that says your tender heart. I think that fits really well with this photo here of my parents who are in love. <laughs> I want to ink it up with some walnut stain. Do you sometimes wish that you could have known your parents at the stage where they fell in love. Wouldn't that be interesting? I would love to see like a movie of how my parents fell in love and got married. <laughs> I think I'm a romantic at heart. <laughs> okay, where do we put this? Oh, right here. Right under my dad's heart. And I'd say that one is complete as well. I like that there's some negative space up here. We can still see some of the original paper. This here actually looks like washi tape, doesn't it? <laughs> I love that we have different textures here, that we have some fabric sticking out. I really like that. I think I need more things that are sticking out here. I mean, I do have quite a bit. I added some fabric tabs on a lot of these pages when I made the journal but I think it could use more things sticking out. What do you think? <sighs> so shall we make one more page? Let's first figure out what our focal point could be that will help me to choose a page. It's easier for me to first choose a focal point and then find a page for it rather than the other way around. Is that what you do? Or do you first pick a page and then start working on it? Of course, that question only makes sense if you have a journal where you have some things on the pages already, because if they're all just blank pages, obviously it doesn't matter on which page you are working on, right? <laughs> so what I also see here on my desk is this here. Again, it has the sepia wings. 
that I printed from Tina's kit. And as you can see here, he has a boo-boo from when I glued on the wings. I rubbed away some of his shoulder when the glue was still wet. And this was left over from my project from Sketchbook Hamburg, where I made a little book of collages. I will also link that for you below because I think that was a very, very interesting experiment as well. Maybe you want to check that one out. I don't want to waste him because that would be such a shame. He's awesome. And he's actually from an amazing printable by Louise Heinzel. And I will link this printable for you below. There are, I think it was 10 pages of these portraits. It's such an incredible printable. Louise, I highly commend you for that one. I think I'll be using that quite a bit. And I'm sure it must be a bestseller by now. <laughs> Okay, so let's find a page for him and then let's figure out how to fix this or how to cover up that boo-boo. I'm still not super happy with this first page. If you have any ideas on, of how I could enhance this page, I think it needs colors. Even though I have some bright pink here, I think it just needs more colors. And maybe actually all it needs is a fun, colorful tab up here, either sticking out this way or sticking out on top. That might be the solution. Anyway, let's figure out where to add him. That is an option. This here is a handmade paper that I bought locally at a shop called Bösna. They have the most beautiful handmade papers. Ooh, ooh, isn't that good? Or is it too much the same? Like, is the background not different enough to the photo? Mm. Nope. Oh, look, I already had that photo in here. I didn't see that when I added the birthday photo, but that's fine. That one is bigger and it looks actually totally different. Isn't that amazing? I just love how you can make photos look different depending on what size you print them and whether you cut them out or not. So where's the one I'm talking about? Here, look. This is the same photo as this one, but here I've used it as a smaller version and I didn't cut her out. Added some collaging around her and this looks totally different, doesn't it? That is so cool. I really, really want to encourage you to experiment with your own photos, whether they are of your family, which I think, of course, is the most intimate thing to do. And I understand not everybody is ready to do that especially if you have parents or siblings or grandparents, you know, that passed not too long ago, it might still be too fresh. It took me years to be able to do anything with photos of any relatives. It's, it kind of felt like a huge leap for me. But since I have done it once and it was in the Keeper of Memory workshop that I did it the first time, this was an in-person workshop by Alex Castro Ferreira that I attended in February here in Vienna. So, so lucky that Alex came to Vienna and that really opened the door for me. So I guess you have to feel ready for it. But if you're unsure, just make a copy of photos and then see. Otherwise, you can obviously use any kind of photos like these or something you find at the flea market or maybe on eBay. Or you use the Tim Holtz paper dolls if you like those. I know not everybody likes them. Some of you are creeped out by them. <laughs> Okay. Uh, ooh, I like it. Wow, what a what a contrast. Oh, I like this. That was super unexpected. Maybe we can use one of the number. Ooh, or maybe we can use one of these numbers. That way, we have a connection to this page because of the orange, and we can cover up that. And we have a pop of color here. Ooh, that just totally makes sense. So I just need to pick which number do we want. I think I need the nine. And maybe I'll even cut out one of the other numbers. 
it's so so nice to just play in a journal like this random pages random things that you have laying around on your desk for me this is my absolute happy place i know if i've even just had a few minutes of playing in a journal like this it's all i need to make my day i don't want to say worthwhile but to make it a happy day even if it's just such a small portion of my whole day this just fills me up inside like it fills my soul you know like i, I feel it fills my well of creativity and happiness and i'm assuming you can relate but i know there are also times where you don't feel like creating anything particularly when there's a lot of other things happening in your life that are maybe emotionally taxing whether it's just stress or some things that are not pleasant that you're dealing with at the moment although those are the times where i realize that i need journaling most but i'm not in the right headspace for it so it's kind of a tricky situation how do we like this the orange is very bright it could also be a six no it has to be a nine i do prefer odd numbers for some odd reason <laughs> Is it too bright? No, we'll go with it. I like the pop of color. It covers the hole in his shoulder. Poor guy. <laughs> and I don't think I want another pop of color. Actually, I don't think I want anything else on the page. I think this is great as it is. I think anything else will just take away from the focal point. Maybe a sentiment that I could see working. And we'll put him right in the middle, which is something I also usually don't do. It's usually, of course, better to put him on one of the cross lines, you know, of the grid when you try to do the thirds rule. What is it called? The golden rule of thirds or something like that. I always do that and it always works out. But there are exceptions to the rules. And of course, sometimes you just have to break the rules. But you have to know the rules first, I have a feeling. You have to intentionally break them where it makes sense and for me in this case it absolutely makes sense just because there's nothing else around him I, I don't know if it makes sense to you but it definitely makes sense to me can we find a matching sentiment again let's not overthink it curiously maybe I dream of stars that glitter. That could be cute because he has wings and he looks like a magical creature. That would actually be cute. I'm going to do that. This is not the page I would think of when I just see the sentiment. I dream of stars that glitter. I would more think of like a girlier page or, you know, a, a woman <laughs> on it or a kid or something magical. I mean, we have something magical here, but... <laughs> this image is not what I would have in my mind, which makes this quote on this page so fun. And it needs to go right here. I think this is my favorite page of those that I've done today. It's so simple. And if you're wondering how I made this background, this is an acrylic spray sprayed through a strange material. Wait, I will go grab that. It's this material. It's synthetic. I don't know what this would be called. I got this at a local store for interior design. I don't know if craft stores might have this, maybe. And I just put it on my paper and I sprayed through it with this Edding Permanent Spray which stinks a lot, but they are so fun. And of course, I mean, it says permanent, so it's different to spraying with, say, a Distress Oxide or something that would then smear, which of course would also be an option. Then you just have to be aware of it and, for example, not use matte medium to glue anything on because then, of course, you will smear your Distress Oxide because it's water-soluble. With this kind of spray i don't have to worry about any of that because it is permanent but it does have a little bit of a shine to it do you see that i don't mind it and i would really recommend to use something like this outside if you can because it really smells really really strong i just love the effect i love this page i love how these are now connected it's perfect this might be my most favorite page of the whole book at the moment what a surprise Thank you, Louise, for providing these beautiful digitals. 
Let me know if you enjoy these kind of uncut versions. This will be easy to edit. I am looking forward to that, to not having spending hours to <laughs> edit a video. Thank you for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful day. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.